Thank you, Stone. Before I open the hearing for the Barnstable Conservation Commission, I would like to ask Angela to do a roll call for the quorum purpose. Abadili. Present. Foster. Present. Hearn. Present. Lee. Present. Sampu. Present. Tangney, present. Darcy Carley, administrator. Present. Staff member Kim Cavanaugh. Present. And Agent Ed Hoops. Present. Everybody's here. Thank you. I think under the provisions of Man General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and or Chapter 237 of the Code of Power Barnstable, the Barnstable Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, September the 3rd, 2024, at 6.30 p.m. for the applications of Esther Fengelstein, Brian M. Kess, Julie Herlihi, Trustee Kinder, Herlihi Family Trust, Caroline C. Ayers. The hearing is being brought, recorded and broadcast on the town of Barnstable's government's access channel. The plans and application are on file and may be reviewed by scheduling appointments by sending email requests to Darcy Curley at 230 South Street, Hyannis. This meeting is being recorded and broadcast on the town of, town of Barnstable's government's access channel. In accordance with the Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Section 20, please let the chair know if anyone is recording this meeting. Hearing none, this evening's hearing agenda is posted on the town's website. On the agenda, next to each application is the amount owned to the town of Barnstable for the cost of advertisement. Please send your checks to the Conservation Division at 230 South Street before the hearing. Remote participation. The Conservation Commission's public hearing will be held by remote participation as a result of a NAC extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency signed by the governor on March 29, 2023, suspending some provisions of the open meeting law. Remote public access to this hearing shall be provided in the following manner. One, the hearing will be televised via Xfinity Channel 8 or High Definition Channel 1072. It may also be accessed via Town of Barnstable's government's access channel. Two, the real-time public comment can be addressed to the Conservation Commission. Utilizing the Zoom link, 832-476-116865 or use the toll-free phone number, 888-475-4499, as on the agenda. Third, the public can also email the comment to darcy.curly at pound.barnstow.ma.us at least eight hours prior to the hearing. I have one announcement. As you know, the Conservation Commission is has an open seat right now. And we are looking for someone who has some local knowledge, contractor experience, and some common sense. So if you are interested in joining the Conservation Commission, please send your committee's application forms to Cynthia Lovells, the town council's administrator. Her email address is cynthia.lovell at town.bonstable.ma.us and the committee's application form can be found on the town council's website. Tonight, we have three LDA. The first one is Esther Frankenstein's re removal of beech trees infected and beech leaf disease within 50 feet of Lake Pocket and replacement with a new tree there nearby at 256 Holly Point Road, Sandville, as long as the assessor's map 232 puzzle zero three ones. Um, is Sergio here? Yes, I'm here. Do you want to talk uh, about the projects? Yes, sir. Um, uh, we submitted this request to remove a beech tree on the recommendation of J.S. Comoly. He's an arborist with Comoly Tree Care. Mr. Comoly inspected the tree in question and determined this beech tree is infected with beech leaf disease. Um, given the close proximity to our house, Mr. Comoly is recommending that the tree be completely removed. Beech leaf disease is caused by a nematode. It is a progressive disease that kills the tree. And this particular disease is rapidly spreading throughout the Northeast and the Cape. As the trees die, the limbs become brittle and can cause damage. 
Uh, the reference tree is adjacent to my house, um, risking injury to my family and significant damage to my property. So that's why we are requesting the removal of this tree. And you are planning to do a replacement tree, right? That's correct. Thank you. Any question from the commissioner? Yes, um, Mr. Finkelstein, I have a question, please. You referenced a, an arborist recommendation, and is that in our record? Was that recommendation submitted to us? Yes. Okay. My second question is what tree is going, what kind of tree is going to be replaced? A, a, landscaper, is, a landscaper is looking into it, yes. And, and where will it be placed? In the nearby location there. Um, if you could go to the map, perhaps, and point out to it, because um, it's it's a substantial tree that's being taken out because of disease. It is a native tree. I understand the fact that it does represent the potential for damage to your property, um, but it also uh, is, I want to make sure this is not secondarily um, a removal for a, a increased vista. So can just address those those. No, concerns. it is not no, it is not increased vista. We're not this is same, you know, we're we're not trying to increase our vista. We're just trying to protect our family right. and we will replace it in in a location that is is just nearby there. We're not intending to to change anything on the vista. It is a disease tree and we want to do the right thing by by the town, the right thing by 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 the the rules that we have, and certainly to protect our family. That's all we want here. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Peak Luis. Uh, well, my question was the same as Pete's in terms of what kind of tree was going to replace it, and where would it be. So as okay. I said, it is we're going to put it in the in the nearby location. Uh, we're not intending to to change the vista of the house, and uh, it, it will be done in in consultation with a landscaper. Is going to be a suitable tree for that, and you know he's the expert, and and we're going to rely on him. Who is your landscaper? Is Mark? Uh, remember, I have it written down here. And, and could you please perhaps okay the species of tree with one of our staff members? Will do. Is yeah. Mark Holmquist is his name? It's right. I'm sorry. Mark uh, Mark Holmquist. Mark okay. Holmquist. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question from the commissioner? Seeing none. Any public comment, Chandler Waketeen? Seeing none. None. Could I have a motion to approve this project as a negative determinations and um, the tree selections should be uh, consulted with the staff? So moved. Second. 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 Roll call. Abadili? Aye. Foster? Aye. Hearn? Aye. Lee? Aye. Sampu? Aye. Tangney, I, that's unanimous. Good luck. Thank you. The second RDA is Brian M. Kess modified the existing pier by changing the end platform from hammer hat to an L with no increase in length at 365 Lakeside Drive West, Sandville, as song on the assessor's map 232, parcel 049. Arlene? Good evening, Arlene Wilson, A.M. Wilson Associates here for the CATS. Um, this uh, is a, a request to modify an existing authorized peer. Um, and if I can share my screen. Yes, please. Um, let's see how this works. Okay. Whoop. Here we go. Um, so the existing pier has kind of a hammerhead design at the end. Um, what we want to do is take the two side panels and turn them around and make them an L um, so that they provide a little more secure uh, 
uh, dockage for uh, the uh, applicant's boat. And I was hoping I could get this, but it's not looking like I'm going to be able to change the page. Um, some things work and some things don't. <laughs> my my IT person just got back from a summer um, in Rhode Island today, and she didn't have time to come in and help a lot. Um, I apologize, but um, okay. the Mr. Katz bought the property in the in March of this year. He had the misfortune to have a property with what's called an interim Chapter 91 license. That license is only good for a year after a property transfers, and then um, you have to get a brand new license anyway. Uh, so he figured he might as well do this all at the same time. Um, this pier, uh, what's been in the water for a long time, is a little bit different than what was shown on the the uh, interim license. That plan had a little bit of an angle in it. The uh, pier kind of went like this. Uh, but in 2005, uh, when the addition was put on this house, apparently the existing pier was in its present configuration. It shows on the Sullivan plan that accompanied the request for the amendment uh, for the addition on the house. And um, that received a certificate of compliance. So um, this is no longer than the existing pier. It's got the same number of supports. There are those things with the um, circular discs on the bottom of the, of the poles. Uh, so they just rest on the bottom. I'd be happy to answer questions as Thank long as it doesn't involve changing the, the page on the plan. Right. Thank you, Arlene. Any yeah. question from, the, from Ms. Bill? Yeah, I just want to confirm that, you know, it, it was a seasonal dock and it's going to continue to be a, a seasonal, seasonal dock, right? That's correct. Okay, thanks. Louise? Um, there's a float that is um, pushed against the shore it looks like a swim float uh really in, into the bushes uh on the east of um the property I'm, I'm wondering what the story is on that it's in it's in the water um i believe some time ago the prior owner actually had a mooring permit for that and used it as a swim float mm -hmm. um i don't think it's been used for a while louise um, so they, have a, I, they have a permit for it. I suspect you would like us to get rid of it. Well. Or get a mooring permit, one or right. the other. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Any other question from the commissioner? Seeing none. Channel, eight, channel 18, any public comment on this? Seeing none. None. Could I have a motion to approve this project as a negative determination? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Abadili? Aye. Foster? Aye. Hearn? Aye. Lee? Aye. Sampu? Aye. And Tangni Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. The third LDA of the evening is Julie Herlihi, trustee, kinda Herlihi, family trust, proposed landscaping, including regrading of an existing lawn, air, lawn area with a small amount of fill and 85 Wachusetts Avenues, high end as a song on assessor's map 287 puzzle 075. Um, Dan. Good evening, uh, Chairman Lee, members of the commission. Uh, my name is Dan Ojala. I'm a surveyor and civil engineer with Downcape Engineering in Yarmouth Port. Also on the line is Tim O'Neill of EB Norris in case there are any questions of the builder. Um, I'll share the screen here. Um, this is um, hopefully a, a pretty straightforward matter for you folks. Um, we're barely uh, entering the 100-foot um, the buffer to a, a small, uh, what we call an IVW, isolated vegetated wetland across the street. Um, 
This is uh, down on Hyannisport, Iano Avenue, go straight down uh, towards the uh, Hyannisport Yacht Club. This is on this side here is the entrance to the Eugenia Fortes Beach. Um, and uh, uh, Paul Shea had, fl had flagged an IVW there. Uh, there's also uh, an important resource area. There's a there's a velocity zone about where the where Iano Road is, uh, with the limit of moderate wave action. Then it transitions to a still water flooding zone, uh, and that's zone AE elevation 11 that cuts right through where our work limit line is. So we're keeping everything outside of the flood zone, and um, about uh, 80 feet or more away from the the work limit line is about 80 feet from the uh, IVW, which is again, across a paved street from Locust. Um, there is a hedge that runs down there, a very prominent hedge, and it's a lawn area that we're working in. And the amount of fill is just a very small amount. It, it's outside of the flood zone. So it's in the zone X or 0.2%. That would be the old 500 year flood elevation. Uh, so just a tiny bit of fill and retaining wall. Um, the retaining wall, I guess, is, is just outside of your jurisdiction, but there's a very small amount of fill there would uh, after construction restore the uh, the lawn that's in that area and everything will go back the way it was. So very little impact, tiny amount of fill outside of the flood zone, more than 80 feet to your resource area. I think you could approve this as a request for determination uh, without any issues, uh, but I would be glad to answer any questions if you have them. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Louise? Uh, well, just a small question. Uh, you say a small amount of fill, but you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So um, what do you mean by small? Can you give us a ballpark? Um, probably within, about? The, within the 100 foot buffer, probably two or three cubic yards, just uh, just a few, uh, just a tiny, tiny amount. Um, less than six inches of fill for an area of about 20 feet transitioning to nothing. Uh, outside of your jurisdiction, there's a little bit of fill because we're we're um, raising up a patio. But again, that's not within a resource area, and that would probably be, you know, by eye three feet, probably about 15 or 18 yards. But again, it's outside of uh, your concern because it's not in the flood zone. Thank you, um, Angela. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, Dan, I was just curious as to why. That's all. Is this an upgrade? Is this is it functional? Yeah. Is just a touch up. Um, yeah. Well, the, the the house is being reconstructed. Uh, he, here's a map, and 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 that's an area that is a little bit low right now. So they're just bringing a a useful like a deck, but it's just a patio up right against the house, and then it quickly transitions back to the existing grade. So uh, that's all. It's just a a, a nice landscape uh, a feature around the house that, to give more usable flat area right near the house. And then it just quickly drops right back down to the existing grade uh, out towards the uh, resource areas. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions from the commissioner? Seeing none. Channel 18, any public comment on this one? Seeing none. Could I have a motion to approve this project as a negative determination? So moved. Second. Roll call. Abadili? Aye. Foster? Aye. Hearn? Aye. Lee? Aye. Sampu? Aye. And Tangney? Aye. That's unanimous. Excellent. Thank you. Thank Good you very day. much for your time. Thank you. We have one NOI tonight is Caroline C. Airs to replace existing railroad ties and brick steps to shoreline with natural stones to replace existing timber landing and stairs into ponds and proposed visitor pruning at 208 Hunkerness Next Rose Sandview as on well Assessor's Maps 252, parcel 140. John? Uh, good evening, John O'Day from Sullivan Engineering Consulting. Uh, representing the applicants who are also in the meeting room this evening, uh, along with Rob DeMello. I will bring up the plan for you all. Uh, as you mentioned, this is on Hutkins Neck Road. We're just under half an acre of land that's a budding shallow pond. Uh, it's a property that's been developed since the 70s with a single family dwelling. Uh, there is a set of steps leading down to a landing by the pond front uh, that is old timbers, that it's uh, some bricks in between the steps along the walkway. Um, 
that it's time to um, be replaced. And so that that is the project we're really just replacing within its existing footprints. Uh, would like to get rid of those railroad ties and bricks and, and put in like a more natural stepping stone to, to get down that um, buffer zone. Uh, the landing will be within the existing footprint uh, entirely. Um, I think hopefully it's a pretty straightforward project and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, John. Before I go to the commission, I want to go to Darcy to provide some background information. Okay, thank you, Tom. Um, so the house was constructed um, early, like 77. I know there were some questions that came in from commissioners about, did this um, landing predate the Wetland Protection Act? We started, the, com the commission and the town started getting applications like notices of intent in the around 1973 we would didn't the commission didn't see a lot of applications at that time um but between 73 and i would say early 80s we did not have the type of building permit sign off review that we have currently. So there was probably a lot of people in town that had no idea about the Wetland Protection Act and even coming to the commission, not saying that they shouldn't, but um, we, the commission has been out here for two previous determinations as John had in his narrative. Um, the 2014 dealt with um, enclosing a, uh, screen porch, I believe it was. And the 2016 was um, the property owner actually wanted to remove existing lawn and change it out to native plantings. It was not something that was required um, as mitigation. The plantings did go in in 2016. And um, I have photos. Oh, John, can I, can I, mm -hmm. um, thanks. Let's see. Replace current share. Okay. Um, let's see. Sorry. I have to get to my. Um, a lot of the larger plants are still there. It was the smaller ones uh, that don't exist anymore. I did speak with the homeowner today, and he said that they did have plans on replacing the plants. Um, let's see. Here is another. Another view. So basically we had some um, mulch areas on either side of the steps going down. Um, I had sent John an email later in the afternoon about maybe recommending getting a revised plan to actually show um, the plant replacement. Um, it, I'm not really sure about trying to separate the determination. That was something where the where the, as I said, the homeowner wanted to remove actual lawn and do the plantings and they did it and some of the plants didn't survive. So I just would throw a suggestion out that maybe John could add this to um, a revision. Thanks, Darcy. Um, how about John? Thank you, John. Can we go back to the full screen, Darcy? Uh, thanks. Uh, when I walk the property, I, I, those steps are, are dangerous, and I, I think it's a very wise move, and I think it's something I would support to remove them as requested and replace them. The only issue I had was the width of the vista, John. Um, it, it literally almost goes from one side of the house to the other, 
um, in terms, and there's some great growth down down by the down by the the pond. It's really some beautiful growth, and I'd hate to see much of that trim back even under the guidelines. So I kind of pace off on either side of, of the the steps and the landing, and came up with about I don't know, 14 feet on either side for a total of like 28 feet or so on either side of that. And I'm wondering if that wouldn't be um, more acceptable to the commission than the entire amount of vista that's being requested now. Thank you. John, do you want to show the site plan? Or I'll bring that back up for you. Um, so I believe that the vista lines as we were drawing them and I'm just scaling them off and I'm, you know, getting 35 feet as opposed to, I think you said the 28 feet, um, you know, that was sort of in the area where these plantings had been and, and what Darcy's saying that this used to be a lawn, which they voluntarily took out and put plantings in. So we were, we were trying to just kind of keep where the existing corridor was um, and are not trying to do, you know, <laughs> It's just a, to trying to create a window between the understory and the canopy, not trying to do any tree removal or any wide open clearing. Um, Again, I, I recognize it was within the, the guidelines. Yeah. But if you look at your first spring guideline, with the, uh, the two lines, uh, it's almost the entire width of the, the house, almost. Um, so I, again, I, I said, all right, if I lived here, what would what would be a good balance? Good compromise. And again, I paced off on either side of the, the deck there, about 12, 14 feet on either side, which would give him a space of roughly, you know, 28 feet total vista uh, equally on either side of that. And, and then I really thought that would satisfy any vista needs and still preserve some of that growth along the pond, which obviously is pretty important. So that's where I was coming from, Jeff. And, and I, I kind of wonder if that wouldn't be quite satisfactory to, to a homeowner, just by thought. Thanks, John. Um, Bill? Yeah, <clears throat> um, I, I, have, I have a concern um, about the timber landing and the stairs that are going right literally into the water there. Um, they were never permitted. They were put in after the Wetlands Protection Act, and they've just sort of been allowed. And there were, were two uh, RDAs, one dealing with a screen porch, another one dealing with a lawn, and they've been, you know, included in those filings. Yeah, we've got that there, but it was never permitted. And here we have an NOI that are, is basically saying, yeah, here's a permit to do this. And today, we would, as a commission, never allow a timber landing to be right up against the water like that. That's just, that's just not, that's so old school, it's not funny. And then stairs going right into the water. And I'm thinking, well, it's never been permitted. And here we're now going to permit it, finally. And I, I guess I have heartburn over that. And yet, because, you know, it, well, it, it was at a time when the Conservation Commission was not, you know, uh, really, they were allowing whatever to happen. And I guess it just doesn't make sense. We wouldn't allow that today, and now we're about to allow it and permit it. And so I, I have a problem with that. And I, a second issue that I have is the, and, and Darcy had a picture of it, and it, it's the entire hillside there is all mulched. The, the zero to 50, has um, really been sort of, if you will, manicured. Yeah, we got some little bushes in there. I feel like in terms of having a vegetated buffer strip to shallow pond, you know, we're really missing the boat. You've got a tip, we're, now we're, asked, we're being asked to permit this, uh, this timber landing and uh, allowing this this mulched area which basically creates you know runoff in steep in a fairly steep gradient area and that's going to potentially contribute um 
dirt or what have you, runoff that goes into the pond. I, I think that this project really, I have a real problem with it. Um, I, that's not, I'm going to say that right. That's, that's all I have to say right now. Thank you, Bill. Um, Darcy, was there a discussions about the mulch being removed in the future after this is done to be replaced with some planting that we had before? I'm sorry, a conversation with between with, John and I or the homeowner or? With the homeowner. No, no. Oh. I just said that we would be discussing it tonight um, more than likely, and then I reached out to John, but... Um, I did get that email and, and I did have a chance to yeah. forward it. I didn't get to speak to Caroline directly, but I did talk to Rob uh, and, and I'm sure that we could incorporate, uh, you know, a planting pallet into this plan to, uh, you know, be replacing some of those smaller things that didn't survive and and, and uh, enhancing that, that buffer area um, to the point that, you know, it, it wouldn't be needing the mulch that it's, it's gotten over the last couple of years, I guess. So um, I'm sure that that could be addressed as part of this filing. Thanks, John. Pete. Yeah. Um, so I think we all agree it's a pretty non-functioning buffer with the lack of any, any ground cover vegetation just being pretty much mulch. Um, what did strike me as particularly noteworthy is the amount of shoreline vegetation. And you look out across shallow pond and it's a remarkable shoreline, save for a property up on the northeast corner of it, which is a wide open, I don't know if it's a, if it's a, a private owner or if it's a camp or something, but it's a wide open shoreline with no vegetation. This property has fantastic shoreline contributing to, I would say, fish habitat, um, invertebrate habitat. And I would hate to see that vegetation altered much. So when we talk about vista pruning, I'm hopeful that it's not the too much of that vegetation right at the water's edge, um, you know, close to the height of the... Um, platform area. I'd also have to agree with with Bill here. Um, this is not permittable today. Uh, and Darcy gave us the background that the RDAs in the past never address this. It predates 2014 and 2016, certainly given the amount of, of wear and rot that's in those timbers. So I'm a bit hesitant to say okay to a replacement in kind. We, you know, something, I, I don't see this as a grandfathering of something that predate, predates our, our regulations. I really don't. Um, possibly a platform a little bit further up the hill um, with those ability to access the pond with some kind of steps. I. I feel okay with that. But my concern is, is there's no buffer there and the platform doesn't buffer and the mulch doesn't buffer and you get runoff, both rain, nutrients, you get uh, mulch runoff, um, potentially on a heavy rain event, you might even get soil erosion runoff there. So I, this commissioner has some troubles here with what's being presented to us tonight, even with um, some small investment in more bushes or things within that mulch area. I, I'm not happy with what I saw there. Thanks. Thanks, Peek. Any other question from the commissioner? None. So let me go back to John. John, you hear that there's some concerning about the platform area that the um, the existing I hear that. I, I, I don't I you know this is a landing that you know we can see it in the aerial in the 80s it's been there for at least 40 or 50 years 
four or five owners, clearly old based on the, the timbers that are there. I just don't think it would be right for the commission after having been out there two times before to say, oh, you shouldn't have this. I, it, if it was permitted before, we wouldn't be filing the notice of intent. That's what led us to this discussion is we, you know, we reviewed with staff when it first came up, what's the filing protocol? Oh, we don't have this in, you know, specifically included in any of the prior permits. This should, that, this should be a notice of intent. This should have its own order of conditions. I just, I think the commission has not tried to go back after 50 years on something before when they've seen it before and when it's clearly, you know, historically within reason been there. Um, so uh, I'm struggling with that comment of it, it being eliminated at this point. Um, I, I think that we're open to improving the, the buffer zone further around it. You know, I, I think that these, these are the owners that, that did the two prior filings. Um, I, I think that this kind of comment would, would certainly be a, a, a shock to them, you know, 12 years after having out there the first time to remove one and put in native plantings. Uh, I'm struggling with that. John, do you have any other comments in regarding to our John's comment to the width of the Vista Corridor? I'm, I'm, I'm sure that we could work towards narrowing that corridor, and I'm sure that we could work towards improving the, the buffer zone. But I don't know what to do about the landing. Okay. So if we're doing a revised plans, I would like to have, I mean, when you narrow down the uh, with the corridor, we should put a length in the in dimensions wise from the existing walkway down so that we know exactly what that is right compared to what we have right now. Um, Bill. Yeah, I, I uh, uh, John O'Day, I, I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to, to what you say. Um, you, you said it, that timber uh, platform has been there since the 80s. Um, is, is that you? And you mentioned in the NOI materials that there was an aerial photo. Is, is that you have an aerial photo that documents that thing was there in the eighties? There's a town GIS. Let me see if it will switch to this. So this is the recent one. But if we scroll back through historical aerials, so you can see it in, in this area, is my screen showing? Yep. So that, that's 14, and I can scroll all the way back to 89. It's not as clear as some of today's, but I mean, to me, it's clearly a, something different right in the area where it does show up in the, there's 95. Do you, do you think that it would be possible to that the owner would in 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 the interest of trying to limit essentially run off from the lawn up where the, the house is do you think they would be open to trying to do sort of a protected planted area in that slope within the zero to 50 that's basically on either side of those stairs I have no problem with, by the way, putting in those stairs, you know, replacing the stairs. That's that's not that's a no brainer to me. But but on either side, you've got all of that mulch. I mean, it would be so nice to be able to, you know, create a, a, a real vegetated buffer in there. They would have their stairs. And, you know, Pete's talking about moving the thing back. And I don't want to, like, uh, ruffle his feathers. But, you know, if, if you could at least get the buffer much better, not just here's a plant, yeah, a plant here and here and did it survive, but really essentially have a little fence, some kind of, you know, we've, we've talked, you know, we've got the little, whatever you call it, I want to call it a white picket fence, but it's not that, you know, some kind of little demarcation that basically says, hey, let's let this, this, this hillside rebut, you know, be, become rebuffered with natural vegetation. And 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 then let them put in the platform and their little stairs, which we would never allow today. But I I hear you. I hear that hey these these owners went through two 
RDAs already where they acknowledge they had this thing and no one balked. So, I mean, it's, you know, I, I, I would really love to see the, 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 at least the buffer seriously beefed up. And if you could provide a plan to that effect, that would, you know, a, a, a resubmittal. And, and then one other thing, Pete, Pete mentioned that for the Vista corridor, if you could keep, if you could keep some of quite a bit of that vegetation that's low, low at the near the pond level, I think he referred to it being sort of well, the pond, that that timber thing is probably that timber platform is in the order of what three feet high, four feet high, something like that. And yep. If you could somehow keep keep some of that vegetation that's creeping along, you know, keep that vegetation intact, um, so that. Yeah, you could have, as John was saying, John Abadili was suggesting, you know, a somewhat narrowed, but not, you know, you could you could open it up so that the landowner could see out across the lake, but keep keep the, the vegetation close to the water. That's that's what I would like to see. Thank you. And, and I think that we're that's certainly the intent of the Vista. Um, just again to kind of clarify it, and it says it on the on the plan of. You know, we're just trying to create a corridor kind of between the understory and the branches. We've said for four to six feet on that that understory. So if that, I mean, we're right in line with and or above the landing of of definitely keeping that. Uh, and if we need to narrow it a few feet on either side, we're open to it. And as Darcy, you know, had mentioned trying to to get more plants into that buffer area. We're open to, to you know, submitting a revised plan, working with Rob and staff and the owners to to come up with a good mix of, of you know, suitable size shrubs to fill that area back. Like an unmulched, an unmulched, um, yeah, planted area. <laughs> I mean, that would be the intent in terms of putting the more plantation plants in there, and then you are taking the mulch out. Can I say something? Well, uh, not yeah. right now. Pete? Can I say something, please? Not right now. Thank you. Pete. Okay, but I, I have something important to say we, with regard to when I first moved to Cape, there were blueberry, low blueberry bushes and all kinds of natural plants that have been have been destroyed. And, and we should have someone who is a specialist like Gil Newton commenting on what actual type of plants should be suggested for these people. To bring back the natural state of the well, land. Can can you hold your comment because I'm I'm not going into the public right now. When I go to the sure. public, I'll recognize you. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Pete. Okay, so I I can certainly again, Mr. O'Day, em, uh, empathize with this being here for fifty years. So all I'm trying to do here is what is a betterment than what's existing there. So taking that platform out is going to potentially create a problem. There's going to be erosion underneath it. There's no vegetation all there. So, okay, keep the platform historical, even though we don't have a permit for it, but then maximize the buffer planting, get a bunch instead of the mulch, get like oak leaves, you got these gigantic oak trees right there. The oak leaves would make a great cover interspersed with some native vegetation. It'll do fine in the shade that that represents. And then, as you said, Mr. O'Day, the limiting, and as Commissioner Abadili said, limiting that vista cutting, because I tell you, it is a beautiful shoreline that you have there. I'm, I'm wonderfully impressed with the existence that is there today. So I can see, I can see a give and take here, keep the platform, get that buffer strong, and a limit to the kind of Vista pruning that we see in some other places. Thank you, Mr. O'Day and fellow commissioners for listening. Thank you, Pete. John, I'll let John. Yeah. I I think we're coming down to a, a reasonable conclusion with what Bill and Pete just added. I have to tell you, I would have a tremendous amount of problem 
both from an environmental and a legal point of view, saying something that's been there for 30 or 40 years cannot be replaced. I would have a lot of trouble with that. Um, having said that, however, I think we're being reasonable in saying, listen, you could leave it there and up, you know put the, the new timbers in because you really need them. But by limiting the VISTA and by adding a fairly strong amount of plantings without mulch is, is really going to be, a, I think, a very supportable compromise. Thank you, but John. I would agree with John. I have to say that I struggle with saying that, you know, it's been there 50 years, but you got to get it out of there. But, but we don't have to address that because I think we're coming down to a reasonable compromise. <laughs> Right, Bill? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. Thank you, John. Um, I think there is no more comment from Angela. The, oh. from that, right? It's just a thumbs up. Thank you, Tom. I just want to agree with the rest of the commissioners. I'm agreeing. Nobody's trying to not have the, the platform or the stairs. We all agreed on that. We're trying to figure out how to avoid the impact in the areas, and that's all. So I was just agreeing with a thumbs up. Okay. Channel 18 public comment. Roberta, you have some comment to make? You're muted. Roberta? I'm sorry. I'm unmuted now. Forgive me. Um, when I first moved to the Cape in 75 and I saw a lot of development, there were so many beautiful lowberry, uh, naturally wild blueberry bushes that grew. Um, with when the Cape began to get overdeveloped, we lost all of that. And, and you know, with the, with the endangered species of birds and so forth, um, I think it would be very wise if the commission would have a list of recommended plantings to keep an area natural to, to replace what has been removed from the Cape over all of these years of aggressive building. Um, I'd like to see the natural... Um, plants restored, um, lady slippers uh, will come back. Um, I just, it, it, it's, it's, it's rather than planting it to look pretty with uh, mulch and what the, you know, what the, the property owner owns, I, I think it would be nice if we encouraged uh, property owners to encourage um, their wildlife, especially on ponds, I, I, I live on a creek, um, is to encourage the natural growth of low berry bushes of blueberries and, and things that feed the uh, wildlife. Darcy might want to respond to that, Tom, with the list. Yeah. We, have, we have a planting list on our website that the consultants can get to. It has all the native plantings. It was something that was put together together by the Cape Cod Cooperative Extension Service. And we also, in other areas, promote uh, monarch butterfly habitats in meadow areas. So we do have this information available to people. And the I'd, like to see, I'd like to see it encouraged more. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. But we always have that list available for the consultant, especially when they're planting some plans in the buffer area to select from. So could we get the address? address? Oh, Roberta, have you, what is your address? Roberta? Hi, I'm at 80 Greenwood Avenue, Hyannis. Thank you. I'm on, I'm on um, um, Joshua's Creek. Thank you. Thank you. 10 to 18, any more public comment on this? Seeing none. None. Could I have a motion to approve this project subject to receipt of a revised plan showing a dimensions of the narrow Vista corridor and some planting plans to showing in the air to, to buffer the area to provide better buffer and removing the mulch eventually in the area? Um, did we miss anything? Yeah. John, did I miss anything? Uh. No, but before we go forward with a motion, uh, there's enough which I think should be brought, enough information brought forth to the commission that I personally would like to see 
the planting plan. I would like to see some kind of demarcation um, on that buffer. So, so I don't necessarily want to put it in totally on the lap of staff to okay this. Um, that's just that's just me. And I, I and I and I would like to have a demarcation where that area is clearly marked, where it should be allowed to naturalize. And I would like to see something other than a narrowing of the vista of something more specific uh, than that. You know, if he narrows it three inches, is that going to be meaningful? Again, my suggestion was something in the area of, you know, 14 feet on either side, so a total of 28 feet, but that was just a suggestion. I know. But I do think we need something a little bit more specific than a narrowing, in my opinion. Okay. Sorry. So, <laughs> so John, I mean John O'Day, yeah. we need a we need a continuous to bring it back with a revised plant. If we have to do that, uh, we have to do that. I, I've only heard it, that specific request from Commissioner Sampu. I think it was Darcy said it before any of you that it would be nice to get a, a, a planting palette put together and incorporate into this plan. We have the list. Um, if we, if you want us to come back, we can come back. But it seems like we kind of pick plants all the time with staff. So I wonder if Darcy could comment on it, Tom. Well, but it sounds. But from what I'm hearing is, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm hearing that you know the commission wanted to see the plan rather than leave it up to Darcy. Okay. Am I right? <laughs> if, if Darcy can allay any worries that I have for getting a robust planting plan in there. So I'd like to hear from Darcy. Okay, Darcy, do you have a comment? I have confidence John and I can work this out. I will make sure there's a demarcation. It's gonna be written on the plan that um, beyond demarcation is to be once planted, left natural, no matter what happens. Um, so, and, uh, but we, we probably do need a width. I need to know the width for the Vista because don't leave that up to me. Please. John, my suggestion was 14 feet on either side, a total of 28 feet. Is that reasonable to you? If you look at your plan? I, I think that if we could stick to 28 feet and we'll go back there to the site to say like, well, is it better based on what's here already? Is it better to be 16 feet okay. on one side and 13? But um, if we can narrow it to 28, we'll get that width and get the best location onto the site. Then I would be happy with it. And so would I. Okay. okay. So could I have a motion to approve this project subject to receipt of a revised plans, showing the dimension of the Vista corridor and the planting plan that revealed it by the staff with the demarcations. And ultimately is the removal of the mulch in that area, in the buffer area. With the Vista corridor being no wider than um, 28 feet. With the amendment of the 28 feet of the white of the view corridor, maximum. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Abadili. Aye. Foster. I had a technical problem, and so I missed part of the discussion. So I'm, I'll go supportive of the proposal. I'm abstaining. Okay. Thank you. Hearn. Aye. Lee? Aye. Sampu? Aye. And Tangney? Aye. That's five of the six of us. Thank Good. you very much. Thank you, John. We have three sets of minutes, July 23rd, August the 6th, and August the 20th. So I make a motion that we accept the minutes from July 23rd, August 6th, and August 20th. Second. Second. Roll call. Abadili. Aye. Foster. Aye. Hearn. Aye. Lee. Aye. Sampu. Aye. And Tangney. Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you. Before I go, before we 
finalize the meetings and i just want to say hi to charlie i haven't seen you for a while i know you have been busy working with the town council meeting and all that stuff thank you for your contributions so our next hearing is up to is september the 10th at 3 p.m could I have a motion to adjourn so move. So move. second second broke on tangni i sampu i lee i Hearn. Aye. Foster. Aye. And Abadili. Aye. That's unanimous. We are adjourning at 725.